Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And we're going to be talking about kombucha scobies. And that is the um, combination of bacteria and yeast that forms this like circular disc, depending on what kind of a jar you put it in when you make your scoby, when you make your kombucha. And you get one every time you make kombucha. Um, so you get a lot of scobies if you make a lot of kombucha. So everybody keeps asking me, what do we do with all these scobies? So if you're anything like me, you have a pile of scobies in a massive scoby, what they call a scoby hotel, just waiting around. And it feels somehow wrong to just throw them away um, when you've taken care of them and watched them grow. So, I, you know, people stack them up in a jar. But there's a lot of things you can do with scobies. Did you know that you can actually eat your scobies and they're actually good for you? So there's special bacteria and yeast which reside in the scoby and kombucha liquid that are the same ones that give kombucha its probiotics and health benefits. And it is thought that the scoby is the more concentrated source of the probiotic bacteria and it has a lot of insoluble fiber. And insoluble fiber helps by moving debris and excess foods through your bowels. And it also helps maintain a healthy gut and helps things like helps avoid diseases like diverticulitis and IBS. Kombucha is packed with glucosamine, which helps prevent joint damage by supporting the preservation of collagen. And it really does this by increasing hyaluronic acid, which is really important for the lubrication of your joints. When joints are better able to move, the collagen isn't worn down as much. And kombucha is a very healing drink for many different parts of the body. There are a lot of good reasons to eat scoby culture. Um, they are made of cellulose, which is long strands of linked glucose, um, which is really insoluble fiber. So I have a lot of benefits of eating kombucha scobies. And one of the number one things um, is that it has no calories. It's, it's just basically um, something that doesn't have anything, uh, anything that will retain in the body. And it absorbs the water, making it easier to you, you pass your stools. It aids in waste removal, um, including metabolic waste that's normally excreted in the bio. It has the insoluble fiber I was talking about, which is severely lacking in most Western diets. We need more of that because that helps move our bowels. It lowers cholesterol by absorbing excess cholesterol throughout the bloodstream. And it slows the absorption of sugar and helps normalize blood sugar levels. And that's all pretty impressive, right? And one of the things I love about using scobies is how they have the, the gelatin-like consistency um, that you can, when you add them to recipes, it, it kind of gives it that gel-like uh, consistency, and it also doesn't have any taste. So you can add it to a myriad of things. Now, my daughter Macy has come up with many of these recipes, and I had to be coaxed into trying some of them because I thought she was nuts. But uh, when she came to visit me with all these new recipes, um, just in one day she brought them all. I loved them. I was super impressed. And um, I really found that I really love making scoby slushies. I know that sounds crazy, guys, but trust me, they were it was delicious. Um, it reminded me of Slurpees that I used to get when I was back in grade school. Um, and they're way better for you than the things that you'd buy um, at, you know, those frozen ice drinks that are loaded with sugar and corn syrup. So um, you don't have to eat them. There's other ways you can use them too, but I have 20 different ways you can use your SCOBY. Okay, number one, and I'm going to link this article so you can see pictures of everything and the recipes of everything um, in the description below so you can see these uh, as well as listen to me. Number one, make a SCOBY puree. And eating a scoby by itself is not an easy thing to do. They're very hard and rubbery. They're hard to cut or, or really, you can tear them apart, but it's really hard to cut them. Um, so when I, what I usually do is I put them in the blender. I'll rip them in half into a few pieces. And then I, I make this scoby puree. I just start blending it until I get it to the consistency I need to make the recipes. And the good thing is you can make a lot of this scoby puree and store it for when you need it. So um, the first thing is the scoby puree, and I'll just basically you're just throwing a scoby in a blender and blending it up till it gets a kind of a slushy consistency. Number two, 
this is my daughter Holly's favorite, Ross Gobi cookie dough. So don't be scared of this recipe. It's really good. The cookie dough is probiotic and raw and can easily be made vegan. And you and your family will love it. Um, you can add things like different nuts, cranberries, blueberries. Uh, no, we'll even know the scobies are in there. Um, and don't tell them th what's in there because they may not eat it, but it's actually really delicious. And I, I love making this. I mean, it, it doesn't look like anything but cookie dough. And basically what you're doing, um, you, you know how they're even selling cookie dough in stores now, like whole stores are doing nothing but selling cookie dough. So basically it's a fourth of a cup of scoby prey, a half a cup of like uh, raw sugar. I use coconut sugar or date, date sugar or any of those. Uh, a teaspoon of salt, a half a cup of coconut oil, a teaspoon of vanilla, and one to one and fourth cups. I like to use sprouted spelt flour or sprouted flours are good, or you can use regular flour if you want to. Three fourths of a cup of oats and a half a cup of chocolate chips. And you just mix it all together till it's well combined. And then you have um, a delicious scoby cookie dough. So it's really good. Okay, number three, scoby applesauce. Um, Macy, my daughter, made some of this homemade applesauce one day, and I thought, well, I could put a scoby in this, and she did just that. It's tart, it's tangy, it's raw, and you can tell you can't tell whatsoever that you're getting a bunch of insoluble fiber in your applesauce, or you're getting a scoby. You can't tell at all. It just tastes like applesauce. So remember, apples are huge prebiotics that feed your microbiome. So you're getting pro and prebiotics to change your gut in a spectacular way. And SCOBY applesauce, if you'd like that recipe, um, uh, head on over to my site. I'll give you the link description below. Head on over to this thing, and that will give you the, um, the recipe. But it's basically just a fourth a cup of SCOBY puree, four to six medium apples chopped. I like to peel them. And you guys, don't throw out the peel. Eat the peel raw because the peeling, the peel of an apple is one of the most um, important things to feed the gut lining of um, the certain bacteria that lines your gut and keeps your gut lining intact. It's one of the only things that it really uses to keep it intact and keep it from um, getting leaky gut syndrome. So apple peels are huge to feed that bacteria. So, okay, so then you get four to six apples chopped up in one tablespoon of kombucha. And you add it all to a food processor until you reach the consistency you want. And uh, store, it in your week, store it in your refrigerator for a week and consume it. And it is absolutely delicious. Okay, now, uh, sweet and sour scorby sobey. So you, um, you might even fool yourself with this one. This one really surprised me. I really, really liked this one that she made. Um, you combine uh, lots of your extra scobies with lots of ice and you have a really cool summer treat. It has a unique flavor. Um, I really like this. So basically it's two thirds of a cup of scoby puree, one cup of frozen fruit, two thirds a cup of kombucha or water or apple juice, or whatever you want. And maybe like a little bit of sweetener. You can use like a tablespoon of monk fruit or you can use sugar, raw sugar, or you can use coconut sugar or two tablespoons of honey. And you just uh, put it in your blender. Blend it on high until you get this or the ice crush mode on your blender. And once smooth and blend, you can scoop it out and serve it immediately. And it is absolutely delicious. Okay, so now we have the fifth one is SCOBY dog treats. And you just dehydrate the SCOBYs if you have a dehydrator. And they just, you know, you kind of cut them into little strands. And you have probiotic treats for your dogs. They can chew and munch on these. And it's super easy to make. You're just... Uh, you're just dehydrating them. It's not even, it doesn't even take very long. Um, it, let's see, it's, you, I like to put a little bit of that better than bullion on your, uh, on the SCOBY itself. You just kind of wipe on a little bit of that and then you dehydrate it. And uh, when it's done, you can give it to your dog. It's, uh, they love it. And it's super fun to make. And it's a great way to use up your extra SCOBYs. Okay, number six. Make a new kombucha flavor. It's always nice to have extra scobies and starter tea to experiment with things like coffee kombucha, which is super bubbly because coffee grains are actually um, a prebiotic for your gut that are really good for your gut. And coffee kombucha is so unique and delicious. People love it. And researchers did study on microbes and found that microbes love the microscopic fibers in coffee. And as these microbes grow, they colonize the intestinal wall, 
They keep harmful pathogens from colonizing. And I have a great recipe for coffee kombucha. Um, and just check on that link to, in the description below and you'll find that recipe. It's a little more detailed than I can tell you. So now a SCOBY hotel number seven is a great way to store extra SCOBYs in case you need a new one for your friends, your family, or someone who comes around. And uh, just set them in some kombucha tea in a jar on your counter. It's best not to store your SCOBY in the fridge. Room temperature works best, and you can just stack a million SCOBYs in a jar, and then you'll always have some if you need them. Okay, uh, number eight is a SCOBY slushy, And um, it's it, after it sits, kombucha can come, become somewhat gelatinous, which may indicate the presence of building blocks responsible for the formation of these polyosaccharides um, that make the kombucha solution. And this gelatinous material is what we call the SCOBY, and the material that forms the SCOBY seems to be similar to the collagen in our body. Eating and consuming SCOBY is actually good for you. It's refreshing and tangy, and making a SCOBY slushy is probably my favorite way to use the SCOBY puree. It is really, especially in the summertime, I love this. And so basically what it is, it's a third of a cup of the SCOBY puree. It's two thirds a cup of kombucha. You can use and use water keeper, which is good too. And two cups of kombucha, um, not two, cup, two cups of ice. And okay, so two thirds cup of kombucha or water keeper, then two cups of ice, and then a little honey or a little bit of um, sweetener of some kind. Uh, really, and blend it all together in a high speed blender. And gosh, you'll love it. It's so good. I just love it. So now the next one that we have is, I think it's the SCOBY date balls. Yeah. Now dates are really healthy treats. You, you know, I went to a date farm. I wrote a whole article on how good dates are for you. And it is one of those things that it has a lot of fiber. Dates have a lot of fiber, so they're very good for you. And when you mix them together with the SCOBY and a few other ingredients, you not only have a tasty treat, but a probiotic one too. They are one of my mom's favorite treats, my daughter's favorite treat. And you might become addicted to it because I love dates. And to make a SCOBY date ball, basically you're taking a fourth a cup of coconut oil, a fourth to a half a cup of SCOBY puree, depending on how sour you want it, seven to uh, seven pitted dates. And I like the, I like any kind of date will work. It doesn't have to be a specific kind. A teaspoon of vanilla, a half a cup of almonds, a half a teaspoon of Celtic sea salt, and then 10 whole almonds to, to top your date balls. And you just use a few food processor and blend them all up with the SCOBY puree and the coconut oil. Do that first and then add your dates, your vanilla, your salt, and your almonds. Blend again. And then you scoop them out into little balls and put an almond on top. And they are absolutely delicious. Okay, now the next one, I thought my daughter had lost her mind when she came up with this. She made a SCOBY pie crust. And I thought, no, that's not happening. And I really thought she had lost her mind until I tried it. You'd be so surprised how good it is, and nobody will ever know that there's a scoby in that pie crust. And basically what she does is, it's a half a cup of coconut oil, a half a cup of scoby puree, one cup of shredded coconut, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and three to five tablespoons of honey. So it's kind of a raw pie crust that you can use for, um, you know, a filling that's raw that doesn't need to be cooked. And it, it was actually really good. I had to eat my words. I thought she'd gone crazy. Now here's another one, scoby fruit popsicles, a little fruit, you know, like a half a cup of scoby puree and three fourths a cup of fruit, three tablespoons of kombucha or water and one to two teaspoons of honey. Blend them all up and make them into fruit popsicle molds and nobody has any idea they're eating scobies and they're really good. Now, the next one is scoby energy balls, which I really like these. These are so good. Um, I make them a lot in the holidays and uh, they're a wonderful combination of prebiotics and probiotics. You can use tart cherries or dried blueberries or any kind of dried fruit. Um, and it only takes a few minutes to put them together. And so basically it's a cup of oatmeal, a third a cup of uh, tart dried cherries, a half a cup of any kind of nut butter, peanut butter, cashew, almond, three tablespoons of honey, one teaspoon of vanilla, and a fourth a cup of scoby puree. You mix it all together in a bowl, and you place in the refrigerator to firm up and then you scoop it out with cookie scoop and roll them into balls and then you can eat them and they are really, really good. 
SCOBY smoothies are, you know, really easy to make. I make a smoothie. Goodness, I make a smoothie almost every day. I'm always having a kefir smoothie every morning. And smoothies are one of the fastest and easiest foods to make. Um, that's why I make them on a regular basis. And SCOBYs have all kinds of wonderful properties that make your smoothies extra thick and creamy. So SCOBYs don't have any flavor, so you can add them to your kefir smoothies without changing any of the taste. So any of the recipes for smoothies are really adaptable. Um, usually I take about a fourth a cup of the SCOBY puree, and then like for instance, say half a cup of straw frozen strawberries, half a cup of milk, it doesn't matter what kind, it can be non-dairy, it can be regular, and then half a cup of kombucha, and a little bit of uh, sweetener or honey to taste. And it makes a wonderful, super easy smoothie that's got um, all kinds of stuff in it. You can even add kefir instead of the almond milk. It's up to you, but they do make great smoothies. Now, uh, number 14 is the brown sugar scroby, scoby scrub. And um, I got this idea from the book Kombucha Revolution that made a wonderful salt scrub using dehydrated scobies for pedicure purposes. But this brown sugar scroby scrub is made with raw live scoby and will delight your senses and your skin, and it's so good for your skin. I had a lady come to my class that was, um, she had, what was it that she had? She had something on her face the doctor was really concerned about. Um, I don't know if it, he was worried he wanted to watch it to see if it was cancer for me. And she started putting scobies in and this kind of scrub on her face. And within a week, it had gone completely away. And she started to develop one on another part of her body. And she's put it on. And that one, too, went away. And I heard that from a lot of people, how much it's helped their skin. And uh, I even saw the other day at a store, I think it was called Fresh, they have a, a kombucha toner. It's very expensive, um, but people swear by it, and it's got a lot of kombucha in it. So I think it was called kombucha toner, and it's by Fresh, and I'm not getting anything to say. I haven't tried it. I think it was kind of expensive, so I didn't do it. But you can make your own uh, by doing, if you want to do a scrub, the scrub is just a half a cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of olive oil or coconut oil, one small scoby and one cup of oats, and one to two tablespoons of kombucha, and you blend it in a food processor, and then you put it in a little jar, and then you rub it on your face, and it works really, really good. Okay, here's another good one that I really love, and this is the scoby garlic dressing. Um, oh, I love garlic dressing, like on Caesar salads and things like that, and this one is super good. You basically take four to six, uh, we like to ferment our garlic cloves, but you can use regular garlic cloves if you don't have them. And then about three tablespoons of water, one cup of olive oil, a third a cup of scoby puree, one tablespoon of honey, one tablespoon of mustard. I have a fermented mustard recipe we use, but you don't have to use that. Half a teaspoon of Celtic sea salt and a fourth a teaspoon of black pepper. Blend it in a blender and you got a really delicious dressing for your salad. That's Wonderful. I've had it many times. Now, we have more inventive ways that you can do with SCOBY that aren't really recipes. And if you have brave friends or family members, ask them if they'd like a SCOBY and, and like to make their own kombucha is the best way to get rid of your SCOBYs. But I never try to convince someone to make these cultured foods because I've learned the hard way. When they're not ready, uh, they won't do it. When they come asking, they'll do it, but not until they're ready. Now, um, a lot of people put their extra SCOBYs in their gardens and uh, they just bury them underground. You don't want to put too much, but it does help if your soil needs to be um, a certain a higher pH. And so uh, you can plant them in and around your gardens, and they do help. You can compost them. Uh, one year, my neighbor and I both planted tomatoes on the same day, right across from each, other, each from each other, and my tomatoes kept growing for a month after his, and my plants were twice the size. And I credit the scobies because that's the only thing I had done different. Um, chickens love scobies and so do goats. I did have one lady try to give it to her fish and that did not go well. I think the fish might have died because it ate too much. So, but uh, chickens and goats seem to do very, very well with them. Um, actually, they fight over the scobies. Um, another thing that somebody has done is I've seen people making art with them. They've made jewelry. They've made crafts. They've made the drum heads, you know, the the stuff that you put on top of a drum. They've used scobies to do that. And I have a lady who's made um, all kinds of artwork from it, from 
beautiful scobies. And if you go to the link in the description below, you'll get to see some of her stuff that she's made. Now, the last one is clothes. Uh, Susanna Lee sh shares her experiments in growing a kombucha based material that can be used like fabric or vegetable leather to make clothing. People are actually making clothing out of kombucha scobies. And there's some fashions, there's some really cool fashion school kids who grew scobies in their bathtubs and then tried to make clothes, which was hilarious to me. Now, the only problem I see with this is when the scoby gets wet, they start to rehydrate. So if you're wearing these scoby clothes and it rains, you might, you might be naked. So just take that into consideration. I don't know, but it seems far-fetched to me. But anyway, I hope you find all these helps, um, things helpful and enjoyable, and I hope you'll try them out. And then email me and let me know how it worked for you. Because um, I, love, I love my scobies too, and I'm always looking for new ways, new things to do with them. Thanks for listening, guys, and have a great week, and we will see you next week.